Hi, I'm Vic, and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently, and occasionally with large volumes of smoke. Actually, all this smoke is happening down at the Fab Lab, which is currently in Lakeview School in Masterton. And that's our nice big laser cutter. We'll show you where it lives in a minute. There we go, in the Fab Lab. Meanwhile, back on the farm. For those of you who haven't seen one before, this is a quince. Quince is a fairly hard fruit and requires a certain amount of processing to make it edible. Generally, this involves breaking it down in some way. Although some methods may be very satisfying, the overall yield is rather poor, so we will be chopping them up in the old-fashioned way. Given the amount of quince involved, however, this could take some time. We will then boil them up, having chopped them rather than smash them. We'll put them in here with a few kilos of sugar and boil them up. Then we can turn them into quince mash. That should do it. And this is a bag of sugar we'll be throwing in. And the reason we're throwing this one in is because it was stored in the garage and the water got in a little bit. Mm. Problem solved over what to do with that one. Well, <coughs> thank you, Tanya. First question, do chickens like quince? <laughs> it seems not. We'll check back later. However, chickens did give us three eggs today, so good on you girls. Using the traditional brewing process uh, for schnapps that they do in Austria, you brew the whole fruit. So we'll turn the whole lot into a mash, ferment the whole thing as a mash, and then distill the whole mash. We won't strain the juice off. but to let the yeast do its work, all the fruit has to be, you know, well soft and mushy so that the yeast can permeate it and turn all its nice sugars into yummy alcohol. Not quite soft enough yet. Hmm. Oh yes, that's looking more like it. See, that breaks up easily. There we are. A few more minutes and that should be done. And then we will pour it in that bucket down there, stick on the fermentation lock, and when it's cool enough, pop in some yeast. As you can see, some time has passed. This thing is still very warm and it's time for me to go to bed. Well, at least go to the bedroom and watch to see an arsenal. Stuff in here is still at a temperature of... Ooh, one, uh, 43, somewhere around there, yeah. Um, that's too hot for yeast. Good morning. Well, feels cooler. Thirty degrees, perfect. Just put the yeast in now. It'll get stirred up pretty good when we pour it out. Ordinary brewer's yeast. <laughs> this is, of course, the part where I pour it all over the place. You know, the floor needed a bit of a clean anyway. In the words of every movie director I've ever known, that was great. Let's do it again. Now we leave both of these in the kitchen, in the bay window where it's nice and warm, to ferment for a little while. 
Um, the other reason we leave them here is because the floor is tiled. And sometimes these things get a bit over enthusiastic and everything all froths up over the top, comes out the bum hole and makes the devil of a mess. Uh, it's much easier to clean up off the tiles. The hydroponic flood and drain system seems to be working very well. These plants have survived several weeks in the thank you, Kanye. Survived several weeks in the greenhouse. They're looking pretty good. Nice load of roots coming out the bottom. He's very vociferous today, isn't he? Anyway, so it's time to pop them into the soil. The problem is, this soil is not great, even with the dog's contributions to it. So we're going to have to improve it drastically. First step is to scrape back the top layer of mulchy stuff, which we're going to put back on top once we've planted the plants, and that'll keep the weeds down. Then we dig holes. And then into the holes goes the cheapest vegetable mix we can lay our hands on. That's cheating. Yes, it's cheating. Then we lay out our nice little beetroot plants in a horribly cheating soil and it gets the job done. Of course all this stuff will rot down into perfectly good soil, it's just that frankly you don't want to hang around without a garden while well, we're waiting for that to happen. Then it's just a question of planting them. Because this soil is so wonderful, that's relatively easy. And then we cover them over. Well, not totally cover them over. You know what I mean. And we just tuck the label around the back of the plastic liner. Job done. That was obviously very exhausting and I'm up for a beer. So for now, that's your lot down on Geeko Farm.